In this video, we're going to look at the future value function. Now, the future value of an investment is based upon the size of the investment, the rate of return, and then also the time and years for how long you've made that investment. Once again, so there's three variables the actual investment, rate of return, and then for how long you're making the investment. So let's go into cell B6. I'm going to clear out the present formula. And we're going to go in to F of X and then type in FV for future value. open up our box, and we have three main arguments. This function is set up very similar to the PMT function, where the top line has to do with the rate, or the interest rate, and it's usually going to be amortized over a quarterly period of time, or many times a monthly period of time. So it's going to be divided, the interest rate divided by four, if it's quarterly, you're making four investments, or the interest rate divided by 12 if you're making monthly investments. The NPER, once again, is the total number of payments for the investment. So in this case, it would be 20, 20 years, multiplied by 12. The PMT is the payment that's made for each payment or period. So in our case, it's $100 per month. So let's go into the first line, and we're going to take the interest rate, which is presently 5%, which happens to be in cell B3, divided by 12. Next, on the second line, we're going to take the number of years, which happens to be in cell B4, and multiply that by 12. Lastly, on the third line, the actual investment, the $100 per month. And we're going to start it off by hitting the minus sign and then click on the 100, which happens to be in B2. Click OK. And what this is telling us is that if we were to invest $100 a month, 12 months a year, over a 20-year period of time, and if we were expecting to get a rate of return of 5%, our investment would be worth, at the end of 20 years, $41,103. Also, beneath that, we have the total amount paid in, which would be $100 multiplied by 20 years by 12. The interest earned would be the difference. But once again, what we would have at the end of 20 years would be $41,103. It's not an awful lot of money to retire on. The beauty of function is that you can easily change some of the variables. For instance, if I change the 20 years to 40 years, which would be more realistic, all of a sudden my investment is now worth $152,600. If I change the monthly investment to $200, all of a sudden, 
my future value would be 305,204. So once again, it's, it's very easy to change a few of your variables to get a better idea of, of what the true value of your investment would be 20 years out or 40 years out. And once again, looking at this future value of 152.602, as we've already mentioned, it's based upon three main variables. The monthly investment, the rate of return, and then the time and years. However, what really fuels our growth is this idea of compounding, then how compounding works. So we're going to quickly look at this value of compounding. Let's look at this area shaded in yellow. We have the numbers 1 to 10. And what these numbers signify is at the end of each year, the end of year 1, end of year 2. We're going to take a quite simple example. And we're going to use $100 as our in initial investment. So we made an initial investment of $100 for the entire year. If we had a 5% return, it would be 100 multiplied by 1.05. So at the end of the year, at the end of year one, our investment would now be worth $105. Now without doing anything else, if we just left that account in the bank or wherever, starting in year two, we'd be starting off at 105000 because of the interest multiplied by 5% again. So at the end of year two, our investment would now be worth $110. Going to year three, we'd, we'd be starting off at $110, 5% interest. At the end of year three, we're up to 115. And we're gonna end at really year four. So at year four, we would be starting off, once again, at 115 times our 5% rate of return, all the way up to 121. So it's growing every year without doing anything whatsoever. If we just leave it in that account and, and just let it sit there and earn that 5% interest, at, by the end of 10 years, that would now be worth $162. So we're going to come up here and use Excel to determine the value of compounding. We have a starting off point of $1,200. And what that is based upon is our $100 per month multiplied by 12. So if that's all we ever invested, just $1,200, we're going to calculate that $1,200 and that's all we ever invested and see what it would be worth at the end of 20, 30, or 40 years. Quite simply, how we would do that, equal sign, 1,200, which is our investment, multiplied by, open parenthesis, 1 plus our interest rate, or rate of return. That rate of return is a constant or an absolute. So it's 1 plus B3 or 1 plus that 5%. We're going to make it into an absolute. So we're going to tap F4. So it's now 1 plus dollar sign B, dollar sign 3. Close our parenthesis. Hit our check mark or enter. So with the end of one year, that $1,200 will grow to 1260 at a 5% rate of return. And we're going to copy that formula all the way down to 40 years, maybe a little bit more than 40 years. And we'll do 50 years. the end of 50 years, 
that $2,000 will have grown up to $13,760. It's quite remarkable that you can just invest a small amount of money, let it sit there in an account that's earning a decent amount of interest, and it will grow on its own, all to this power of compounding. Thank you.